think this video. So this is something that within our family, we've been practicing for a very long time. We live really rurally and we've had mudslides that have taken out our main highway and the roads have been closed for weeks at a time. But it's also something that I grew up with with my dad, which you can check out that video. We'll link to it below in the video description. He was a child during the Great Depression. And so going through that and only having food that they had grown themselves throughout the winter months and at certain times, if they hadn't have put that food up, they wouldn't have had anything and they would have went hungry. Being raised by someone who went through that they are always looking at how can I feed my family and not just relying on grocery stores or the here and now. And so it's something that I grew up with and that we have always put into practice within our family once my husband and I got married and we started our own family. So I'm sharing this with you to say, don't just let certain circumstances like rule you with fear and with panic, um, but this is something that will serve you well no matter what's going on um, in the world and over time, but definitely something to start thinking about now if you don't have any type of food storage built up. So I'm gonna start with some of the easy options that you can start with at the grocery store if you're not growing a garden or looking to do um, super long-term, but we are gonna be hitting that so that you can actually know what foods will last 10 or longer years, but this is gonna be your basic starting place. So there are ready to eat meals that you can get. Now, this is not freeze dried. I would recommend if you're looking for long-term food storage that you get some of the prepackaged freeze dried meals because those will be good on the shelf for 10, 15 plus years. Uh, this is not freeze dried, but these are options that are completely shelf stable. You can simply rip them open and eat them or you can choose to heat them. They're a little bit better when they're heated. Um, but this is just kind of like a quick convenience option that will stay on the shelf for at least a couple of years and can be a great way just so that you do have a few things put back. Now, one of the things that I really like to have on hand are some of your condiments. And this is especially true when we start going through some of those longer term items, but things like soy sauce, um, I always make sure that I've got at least two or three bottles of this. I get it from Azure Standard. I do prefer to get an organic soy sauce just because we are talking soy and that's usually a highly genetically modified crop. So we choose to go the organic route. And then things like even a red curry paste. The reasons these can be so important is because if you are doing things like rice, it just gives you a lot more variety. If you just cook a pot of rice, and you're not adding anything to it, yes, it will fill your stomach, but it might not be the most appetizing thing that you've ever ate, but you can add red curry paste for a flavor. Obviously, you can add soy sauce. Um, it just allows you to change the flavor of some of the base foods that you may have in your food storage. And so they're a great way, an easy way to get started because if you always have one bottle on hand next time you go to the store, grab a second one or even a third. It's pretty inexpensive. It does have a good shelf life. It doesn't take up that much space, but it can really uh, make a difference in giving you variety when you need to rely on your food storage. Now, these are not items that I consider for our super long-term food storage, but definitely dried beans and or lentils and peas these definitely will store for at least a couple of years and can be a great way to stretch your food budget and a lot of different varieties. There's so many different meals that you can make with these. Now, the reason that I say dried beans especially are not something for long-term food storage because you know if you have been storing beans for any amount of time, by the time you hit about year three, it doesn't matter how long you soak them, if you cook them in a pressure cooker or if you cook them in a slow cooker all day long, once they begin to get old, they never cook all the way through. They still stay really tough and almost kind of like chewy. They taste uncooked even though they're not. And that's because they have just, they're getting too old. That's something that's very common that happens with dried beans. Now I'm talking usually two to three years before that happens. Uh, but when I see it recommended for 10, 20 plus years doing dried beans, that's not going to happen unless they are like in a sealed 
um, tin can or they have um, went through special packaging. But if you're just buying bags of dried beans at the store or even like I just have my, these are actually dried beans that we grew. These are our Cherokee black beans. But if you're just buying bags of like pinto beans or kidney beans or whatever at the store and you're just putting them in your own packaging or leaving them in those bags, they are not going to be good 10, 20 years down the road. They will never cook all the way through. But for a couple of years, absolutely excellent idea to add to the food storage. And if you are like, oh man, I have some and they're like getting two years old and I bought a whole bunch in bulk, you can safely can cooked, you have to cook them um, or do a quick soak. There's definite methods there, but you can actually can dried beans following safe and approved methods. If you're in the Pioneer Today Academy membership or my canning course, definitely go in there. I've got some different recipes for you with safe procedures, um, but that can be something that if you have them on hand or it's like two years down the road and you're like, man, we haven't went through all of these dried beans, you definitely are able to can those and then they'll stay for more years on the shelf, but because they're already cooked through the canning process, you have to pressure can them, um, then they won't have that weird texture issue that can happen. Now, some other convenient items and easy ones to add to your food storage is think about protein and meat. So this is some canned chicken breast from uh, Costco. I have found if you have a Costco, this is a really good deal. You can get the canned chicken. We don't stock a lot of this because we do raise our own meat birds and we raise our own cattle. We've got a lot of meat on hand because we're a homestead. But if you are not someone who is able to do that, this can be a great way to just have some shelf stable meat on the shelf, relatively inexpensive. You can buy these in the case, or even you can just even grab a couple of cans when you go to the store. So it won't be a lot of upfront, but you can start to add up. And this is great because if you've got, this is a protein source and you've got some lentils or you have some rice or beans on hand, you can quickly throw together a meal that will have a lot of protein and good calories in it to feed your family from your food storage. And then we've got canned beans. So these are canned garbanzo beans. This is obviously store-bought canned beans. I predominantly do home canning, but if you're just getting started and you don't have a pressure canner yet, or you don't have jars and it's something that you're not doing yet, you don't have to wait. You can grab some cans of beans to have on the shelf or some other store-bought canned food vegetables. And they will be, they say best if used by, it's not like they all of a sudden go bad two days after that. It's best flavor, it's best nutritional nutrition value. And then it marginally begins to go down, but it doesn't mean that they have went bad. So so if you've got some of these um, on the shelf, they will last beyond what that best by date says that's stamped on the top of the can. Now, pasta. Pasta can be a great way to stretch a meal, just a little bit of garlic and butter, and you almost have a meal within itself. And there's all different types of pasta, obviously. So I will um, store mine, if I have an open package, we'll put it in the glass jars. I really like glass jars because one, I like food in glass, um, airtight lids, but I can visually see when I'm looking in my pantry and my food storage, if something is low, what we're low of and what we have at a quick glance. Um, so pasta will keep for at least a couple of years. So not super long food storage, but definitely as a way to stretch things that you already have got and keep these on hand. And here is my teenage son loves ramen and his mother is trying to get him to eat or to make better food choices. So I grabbed some of this organic rice ramen noodles for him to try and he said he would try them as long as I promised if he didn't like them that he could still have some of the other brands that we will not mention. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're working on it. It's a work in progress. But I've got these. I just picked these up uh, this week, actually. We're making sure that we keep our food storage well stocked and replenished. And these will be good on the shelf for um, over two years from now. Now, I know a lot of times we think pasta and we think gluten, 
um, and those types of things. But there are gluten-free pastas. And so I grabbed this for me right now. I'm dealing with some uh, gut healing issues, so I am not eating gluten. So there's a lot of options for even having gluten-free pasta on hand. And so I've grabbed these same thing. These are a best buy two years from now, and you can even stretch that further than what it says. But these are just great ways because you can mix, mix and match these with different proteins and flavorings and sauces, et cetera. They can be served, um, you will wanna serve them with boiling water to actually cook them, but then they, they're items that once cooked can be served in cold salads, they can be in hot dishes and casseroles and soups and just all different things. So these are easy ways to get started and then to make sure that you've got a few extra packages just to begin with. And then you can start to build that out so that you have got um, ideally six months to a year's worth of food based upon your family size. But what about those long-term food storage items? Now we're gonna be talking about the foods that have the best long-term storage and shelf life. So up first, we have got our dried grains. So we've got whole wheat berries here as well as white rice. When you are looking at long term, you want white rice and not brown rice. Brown rice can turn rancid, so we definitely wanna go with the white rice. Now, stored in ideal conditions, so that's going to be with oxygen absorbers, out of light, not in heat, not where there's a lot of humidity, and sealed, these are vacuum sealed, then you can get up to 20 years of food storage on these. I would definitely say 10, but even 20 to 25 on wheat berries if they are completely sealed up correctly and you're not getting into them all the time and exposing them to air. So I do recommend for the long-term food storage that you've got the smaller amounts like this on the shelf where I will be opening these and using them from it, but I've got the majority and the big bulk part is in the food safe gamma lid sealed buckets for a long-term food storage or even larger, depending upon the size of your family and how large you're going in bulk, which is going to depend upon one, the storage area space that you have and secondly, the size of your family will determine what you need to be storing. So you can even get the 55 food safe gallon drums, and you could even be storing some of your large bulk grain items in those as well. So aside from our grains, which I said are different types of wheat berries, as well as rice, there's lots of different grains that you could choose. These are some of my top two favorites to have on hand, is honey. So honey will actually last forever. Honey is a food that will store indefinitely. What happens though is honey can crystallize. So this is a jar of honey and you can see that it doesn't, it's not pouring out, it's not liquid right now. So inside that jar, you'll see this is beginning to crystallize where it's just not liquid. That doesn't mean that it's went bad. All you need to do is put a pan of warm water and then set this inside of it and slowly heat that and it will turn back to liquid. Not only is honey fabulous for sweetening and making your foods taste good and is actually a natural sweetener, but honey has medicinal properties. We use honey in elderberry syrup as well as a lot of our medicinal teas and I will link in the video description below to the tutorial and recipe for elderberry syrup. And then we've got sugar. Sugar is another thing that will last for a very long time, 10, 20 plus years, provided it is kept dry. Obviously, we don't want any moisture to get in there. Now, this is actually raw organic sugar. It's not the bleached white sugar. It still will last for a very long time. I like to store the majority of my things in glass, and then this has the, the lid in there, So and it's also lined, so you can see see there. So this does help keep the moisture out. It's not completely airtight, so this is fine. This is just what I use and keep up in the cupboard for baking. And then I've got much larger bags. I like to buy my sugar um, ideally in like 20 to 25 pound bags. And that is kept in our back storage area where it's dry um, and out of direct light. Now, another food item that will last basically indefinitely and for years and not go bad is vinegar. I like apple cider vinegar, raw apple cider vinegar, 
um, because I can use that again medicinally, like using it to make homemade fire cider, a lot of our um, natural remedies, cooking, preserving, all the things. And because it doesn't go bad, I buy it in bulk. So this is obviously a five gallon bucket of raw apple cider vinegar. There is a pour spout on the lid on top, or I can just, you know, take, take this lid all the way off. Um, but I like to sit so it's nice and sealed up and to just use the pour spout to fill smaller vessels to use for my vinegar. This I get through Azure Standard. We will have um, a link below in the video description. We're gonna have a lot of links. Make sure that you click the little drop down, down button and check all of those out. Uh, with more information on Azure Standard, what it is if you're not familiar with it, um, how I order from them and some of my favorite products, but definitely vinegar should be on your list of long storage food items. Then we've got things, these are a little bit more of your convenience type items. So this is actually homemade, but this is a freeze-dried homemade hot cocoa. But think, think things like freeze-dried, um, instant coffee, those are going to last for years versus just regular powdered mixes. And of course, coffee beans will last for a while, but instant coffee is going to last a lot longer than your whole beans because of the oil. So freeze dried is great, but we have a home freeze dryer. So there are home freeze dryers because buying a lot of freeze dried food can get expensive. And when you have a home freeze dryer, it's definitely an investment. So a home freeze dryer is not um, priced the same as like a dehydrator, but the ability to do a lot more foods and they have a shelf life of up to 25 years of your freeze dried foods, it's definitely something to consider. So if you wanna check more of that out, um, you can check out, I've got freeze dried eggs as well as freeze dried drink mixes. Those, these can be really nice. These are more comfort foods like hot chocolate, obviously. There are some calories in there, but this is more comfort. So I would not focus the majority of your long-term food storage on drink mixes. I've seen advice where people say to store like 10 cans of like Kool-Aid um, for the space and your money and especially nutrition. Like if you're looking at long-term food storage to actually feed your family, well, personally, I wouldn't have Kool-Aid regardless, but that's empty calories and that's empty, I mean, that space is just empty calories on your shelf and your dollars spent, your money is gonna be much better placed with actual food items that have calories and will actually fill your belly. I mean, you can drink a glass of Kool-Aid and you're gonna be hungry again really, really quickly after you have that initial sugar burst boost. But if you were to take the same and, and do a cup of, of beans or rice or something like that, it's going to fill the stomach and give you calories um, much better if you're doing cup for cup. Next is canned fruit. Now this is home canned fruit, of course. And home canned foods, they say the best by 18 months. That doesn't mean it goes bad in 18 months. Home canned fruit, provided you have canned following safe, this is actually a jar that um, we just opened and I took out of the fridge. Once it's open, it needs to go in the fridge. But this was peaches that we canned three years ago. Provided that you're following safe and updated proper canning procedures, home canned food will last for a long time on the shelf. Our goal, because we're homesteaders, is to grow and be able to replace that every year so we don't have to rely on storing some of these things as long-term because it's something that we'll always just have coming back in and so that we have our dollars and space two items that we can't produce here on the homestead yet, uh, like sugar um, or rice, um, and we're not growing our own wheat berries. But Canned fruit, be it home canned fruit or canned fruit from the store, is something that will last on the shelf for a very long time. And of course, we've got freeze dried fruit is going to last, anytime you're doing freeze drying, it's going to last much longer than any other form of preserved food. So freeze dried food, fruit, <laughs> Food, freeze-dried food and fruit will last for years on the shelf, upward 10, even 20. Now, this is a jar of freeze-dried strawberries that I did last year, and we are it's actually the jar that's open on our pantry shelf, and you can see why it's not all the way filled up to the top. So uh, mylar bags and doing larger jars sealed for long-term food storage is going to be better, but freeze-dried is an excellent way to go. Now with our other long-term items, we have got extract. So this is homemade vanilla extract, which um, I actually don't have very much left, but alcohol is going to last indefinitely on the shelf. 
So your extracts and or tinctures, thinking herbal medicine, even though I know we're talking about food in this video, it's going to last a very, very long time, basically indefinitely. So think about that because as we're looking at our long-term food storage, we want to be able to have food on the shelf if we're not able to get it at the store. But honestly, right now, with prices increasing, anything that you can buy today that will last for a really long time, you're going to be getting it cheaper now than you will five, 10, and maybe even six months down the road. Uh, this is actually homemade vinegar, um, just so I could just show you kind of some of the options there. You can make um, your own homemade vinegar. I should have actually had it down with our big five gallon bucket though, if you wanna buy a larger amount in bulk. And then lastly, on our list of foods that will last for 10 plus, maybe even 20 years is salt. Redmond's real salt is the only salt that I stock here on our homestead. And the reason for that is because one, I can get it in 10 pound buckets. Uh, you can actually get it in even larger. I think they have a 25 pound option, but I love to use this salt because one, it has all the minerals in it. It's made in the USA, but more importantly, I can use this salt for all of our cooking and our baking for my fermenting and my canning as well as salt curing of things. So I've got one salt and it carries me through all of it. I don't have to also stock canning salt and pickling salt and all of those items. This one, because it doesn't have anti-caking agents added in it or iodine, I'm able to use it for all of the things just fine. And I have, we'll list it below, I have a coupon code that you can use and order from Redmond's themselves to save yourself some money and make sure that you've got salt for all of the preserving needs that you may have, um, as well as cooking and your long-term food storage. So how to get started, what should you be starting with and how much do you actually need for your long-term food storage? I would say, and I know people hate this answer, I hate this answer too when I'm asking, but it depends. It does depend upon you, it depends on your family size, and it depends on what you like to eat. My best advice is to track the foods that you are cooking with and or that you and your family like to eat and see how much on an average week, ideally a month, but if you can even just do a week and if that's something that you kind of eat in that same pattern throughout the month, then you would know by doing an average, you would just be able to multiply out one week obviously times four, that would give you a month, and then times 12, it would give you a general idea on how much you are using for your family of that food item. And then I would start with the things you're eating the most of and that can actually create a meal. So I would not start with freeze-dried hot cocoa mix. As much as I like hot cocoa, that's not where I would start. I would start with the basis of actual meals um, or so like rice, rice is something that you can create a rice pudding or a porridge of. Um, you know, rice is something that you can actually put into a soup. You can mix it with some protein and some vegetables and you can do a stir fry. So I would look at items that have versatility and can become the base of a meal. That's how I would start. And then if you can only do one small, maybe it's a small bag of rice extra the next time you go to the store, that's fine. If you can afford to buy it in a 25 pound bag in bulk, you are going to get better savings and you're gonna be able to build up your food storage that much faster, but you really need to work within your budget and where you are right now. But if you can just add, anytime you're going to the store and it's an item that will store for a while, if you can just add one extra to what you normally would purchase, that is a great way to start and to get going. And then you can simply go out. As I said, I look then at items that have multiple purposes. So for example, the honey and the vinegar, where I can make a lot of different com condiments and salad dressings. Actually, I could do that with honey too for some, some of the, the things, um, but then also serve medicinal purposes. I can use them to make some of my homemade natural herb remedies. Then that would have me picking these items because they serve multiple functions on our homestead, in our home, as well as our long-term food storage. Now, if you're wondering where do I get all of these items in bulk, you're gonna wanna go and watch the video where I talk about where to buy grains in bulk and go over which grains are best depending on how you plan on using them and where to get them.